Good morning, dear colleagues, dear delegates. We will now begin the informal roundtable discussion on cooperative enterprises build better world contributions to sustainable development. As a representative of a country who sponsored the uh, traditionally the resolutions on uh, cooperatives in social development and uh, the sponsor of the resolution which proclaimed the year 2012 as the International Year of Cooperatives, I am very pleased to have the distinct honor to moderate this panel. We have uh, a number of uh, eminent representatives who have distinct background and experience in, uh, in uh, cooperatives development. And I would like to first introduce Mr. Jack Wilkinson, President of XIFAP, now World Farmers Organization of Canada. <coughs> Mr. Jack Wilkinson was elected President of IFAP in 2002 until 2008. Before being elected president of IFAP, Mr. Wilkinson was the vice president and chaired IFAP's trade committee from 1996 to 1998. On the national level, Mr. Wilkinson served six years as pre president of the Canadian Federation of Agriculture and was also president of the Ontario Federation of Agriculture. During this time, he served on numerous federal and provincial committees covering such as land use, tax policy, and safety nets. Jack Wilkinson returned to farming in 1979 after retiring as a captain in the Canadian Armed Forces, where he served as a flight instructor. He's a graduate of the University of Western Ontario. And I would like now to invite Mr. Jack Wilkinson to have the floor. Thank you very much. It's truly an honor for me to be here and, uh, and speak on behalf of the cooperative movement uh, to such an eminent group of people. I would like to apologize right up front uh, to the interpreters because the document I sent you I'm not using. Uh, so uh, um, I will just uh, like to capture a few points uh, that I think are critical, important, and I'll uh, just uh, speak without notes for that purpose. I have spent most of my adult life uh, in the farm community and farm organizations, and which included cooperatives, obviously, to empower people uh, so that they can get from the marketplace what they truly deserve as producers, uh, both through uh, organizing and collective activity when marketing, uh, supporting marketing boards, supporting processing uh, sector, and all of those institutions that come together mm -hmm. to support rural uh, people and particularly agriculture people. And as, a, as the president of the International Federation, I had that opportunity to work with many, many organizations in the developing world that clearly gave me a much broader insight. I think it's clear, uh, without being too blunt, too early in the day, that we have failed somewhat on that mission, and I have to acknowledge that myself. If we were successful, we wouldn't have the world in the state that it is today with growing numbers of poor people, and in fact a disenfranchised group. I think the opportunity of the 2008 uh, economic collapse, uh, it was fair to say, as previous speakers have indicated, that cooperatives did survive well in that context. Uh, and we are now regrouping, seeing the cooperative model once again as a model that may have some value moving forward instead of a simply a failed model of the past, which many have identified a cooperative as. But this will only have any sustainability and growth if we as governments do things different in the future than we have in the past. We have not given the proper space and attention if we want cooperatives to flourish in a multinational capitalist driven system. And to be blunt, if you're a farmer, there is a war going on out there. And it's a war as to who is going to get what part of the consumer's dollar in food production. And it will only happen by organizing people, men and women. Now, what is going to be the best model for this organization to take place? It's not a model that's being advocated by economists. 
It's seldom a model being advocated by educators. In fact, if I wanted to get a master's in business administration, where would I have to go, to which country, to which university, to get a master's in business administration in co-op studies? So when I'm a successful co-op, and I finally get big enough to search for a CEO that can handle the size of my co-op, where will that person come from? The private sector, chances are, with no understanding of how to work with a co-op board of directors and its members, with no concept of all of how you raise capital from members, in fact, probably when they find out that that's one of the principles, they would find an absolute disdain that I actually have to talk to these people. I would prefer going to a major bank and issuing a $100 million note for raising capital on the stock exchange. That's the way I raise capital. And in return for raising capital that way, you get to replace one of the farmers off your board of directors with one of the people who offered up the $100 million. And now you've found out after a few years, you no longer have control of your beloved and dear cooperative. How many times has this happened over and over and over again to a successful co-op? And we wonder how it can possibly be the business model of the future, let alone at the local level. A co-op is a very clear and distinct difference from a capitalist system. I, I live in a capitalist system. I'm a farmer. I love making money. It's much more farming when you more fun making money farming than losing money. I've done both, uh, so I've got the experience on both sides of that. Uh, but I would like to say my reason for being a director on the number of agriculture and insurance co-ops that I am is because my goal is to return the benefit of that co-op to its members not to a shareholder. I am not against shareholder-held companies. They have a service and a role, obviously, to play in the world development. But there are many places in rural areas, in developed and developing countries, that the co-op model is the only model that will make sense for the future. There are many places, many activities, many business parts, many social justice parts, where the return on the investment does not attract the corporate entity uh, that we see today. Uh, if I want to start a daycare center in my little town or my village, the co-op model is the perfect fit. If I, in Canada, for example, you would wonder, why would funeral co-ops be growing in Canada? <clears throat> Well, it's very simple. You either set up a funeral co-op to compete with the, the big multinationals who are buying out all the little funerals in every village so that you can give competitive cost to coffins, competitive cost to embalming fluids, lower the price to die, which is a very important thing so you can pass something on to your children. And so we now have a flourishing industry in funeral co-ops, a local driven community, health care co-ops, the same. The key is, is how do they get large enough and influential enough that they can make a difference on the social justice? So they're just not a fringe that everybody likes to pat them on the head and say, isn't it lovely? We have co-ops. They only employ 100 million people. It is a drop in the bucket. We should be having them looking at targets like 50% growth. 70% growth. What are the institutional tools that a government needs to do to help a crop, crop grow? And if you're sitting there and you're in a developing country and you're a government, I'd like to tell you something, please, right up front. Don't you get involved in a co-op. Governments have screwed more co-ops than almost any other institution by manipulating them, by politicizing them, by getting their hands in versus creating a regulatory framework a taxation policy, a dividend policy, and an education system that when my child graduates from school, no matter in what country, they know how to spell co-op, they know what co-op principles mean, they know the value so that they see a place to get engaged in, instead of hearing nothing but commercials on a capitalist system which I should look after myself first, I should consume as much as possible before I die, and I should be as selfish as hell. That are not, those are not the co-op principles. Now, I excuse my language. I use it for effect and shock value. I'm not Mr. Stern. I won't go any further than that. You've heard my number of swear words, and that's where I will stop. But this is fundamentally important that we do things different moving forward. I implore you. We have this wonderful opportunity coming out of a very difficult time period. 
We have the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. We have the take back our country movement taking place in many developed countries. Is this not the time for us to stand up proudly and say we know there's a better way? There is a better way. We've got a base to build from. Let's put the tools in place to give the other parts to make the crops flourish versus just being another small sector in the growth potential of this country. Thank you very much.